Hello everyone. Our today's topic is bacterial structures. First of all, it can be divided into two parts: essential structures and non-essential structures. There are six essential structures. First of all, cell wall. After that, plasma membrane, nucleoid, ribosome, mesosome, and periplasm. Only in case of gram-negative bacteria. There are seven other non-essential structures. Those are capsule, fimbri, flagella, spores. plasmid granule and glycocalyx so we will know about each of them in this video cell wall and periplasm have already been discussed in the previous video link is given below so please watch that video and we will start from the plasma membrane the characteristic of bacterial plasma membrane is it consists of phospholipid bilayer and protein 70% of the bacterial cell membrane is protein and there are almost 200 types of proteins in the bacterial cell wall The difference between eukaryotic and bacterial cell membrane is prokaryotic cell membrane do not contain any sterol the only exception is mycoplasma they contain sterol like cholesterol in their cell membrane after cell membrane it is time for bacterial nucleoid the bacterial nucleoid consists of a single circular molecule of double stranded dna and there is there are almost 2000 genes in comparison to man who have 100000 of genes as it a as it is a prokaryotic cell it does not contain any nuclear membrane nucleolus mitotic spindle and histone protein but they contain some histone like proteins they replicate amitotically and one very important thing to remember that <coughs> bacterial nuclei don't have any introns but eukaryotic cells contain introns now let's see about the ribosomes The bacterial ribosomes are 70s in size. There are two subunits, 50s subunit and 30s subunit. In case of eukaryotic cell, ribosome is 80s and the subunits are 60s and 40s. Function of ribosome is actually protein synthesis, but as there is difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic ribosome structure, the bacterial subunits are the target of antibiotics which we often use. There are two types of subunits 50s and 30s inhibitors of 30s units are aminoglycosides like streptomycin neomycin canamycin and others like tetracycline and nitrofurantoin and the inhibitors of 50s ribosomal units are the most famous macrolide group like example is, is azithromycin and others like chloramphenicol and clindamycin Then about mesosome. Mesosome is actually nothing but the invagination of cell membrane, which arises during cell division and participates in cell division. Now about the non-essential structures. First of all, the capsule. The capsule is a layer that covers the entire bacterium, composed of polysaccharide, except in Bacillus anthracis, which has a capsule composed of polymer of D-glutamic acid. Some examples of encapsulated bacteria are Streptococcus pneumoniae, Haemophilus influenzae, Neisseria meningitis and Klebsiella pneumoniae. Importance of bacterial capsule. The first one is the pathogenic role. As the bacterial capsule has a negative charge and the neutrophils also have negatively charged membrane, so it prevents phagocytosis by repulsion of negative charges. Now the diagnostic role in which we have to know about the coelang reaction the capsule can be demonstrated by the anticapsular antiserum where it is marked by capsular swelling it is also called neufeld reaction and we can also identify a bacterial colony by its mucoid appearance in the culture media in a media where there is capsulated bacteria and antibody against the capsule the capsule will swell up greatly this is known as coelang reaction again We have some prophylactic use of this capsule like some bacteria streptococcus pneumoniae haemophilus influenzae we have produced vaccine against this capsular polysaccharides Lastly it plays an important role in adhesion of bacteria with various structures of the body Then fimbri fimbri are the short taut hair like structures extending from the cell surface There are actually two types of fimbri or pili One is the ordinary pili that helps in attachment and other is the sex pili that helps in conjugation. The strains of Neisseria gonorrhoeae which do not have any attachment pili 
and they do not cause any disease. So it is an important virulent factor and the sex pili helps in conjugation which causes transfer of antibiotic resistant gene from one bacterium to another. After the bacterium is a very similar structure that is flagella. Flagella is made of a protein which is called flagellin protein and the pili which has been discussed in the previous slide is made of the protein name is pilin protein. Flagella is a thread like structure which is responsible for chemotactic movement. It has three parts base, hook and filament. Only rods have flagella, no cocci has flagella. The spirochetes have a special kind of flagella which is known as axial filament. According to the number of flagella and their arrangement, there are four types. Monotrichus that means single flagellum at one pole, example Vibrio cholerae. Amphitrichus means one flagellum at each pole, example Pseudomonas. Lophotrichus that means tuft of flagella at one pole, example is Helicobacter pylori. And lastly, Peritrichus which means multiple flagella around the cell, example is E. coli, Proteus and Salmonella. There are some clinical significance that many enteric bacteria has H antigen, for example Salmonella typhi. This H antigen is actually the flagellar antigen. Against this antigen, body creates antibody and we can detect the antibody and identify the bacteria. Now let's talk about granules. Granules are actually two types. Some may be storage of food which are the glycogen granules most commonly and some may be the storage of energy which are among the which most common is the polybutyhydroxybutyric acid and some granules are known as the volutin which are also a very high energy storage. And in case of Corvinobacterium diphtheriae, these volutins are known as the metachromatic granules which contain polyphosphates and they show black color in case of Albert stain that's why they are called metachromatic granules. After granules we will talk about the glycocalyx. It is a polysaccharide coat secreted by many bacteria which adheres with different structures of our body example is skin, heart valves, teeth etc. Those strains of pseudomonas which have this glycocalyx forming property causes frequent respiratory tract infection in cystic fibrosis patients. Staphylococcus epidermidis and viridens streptococci, they cause endocarditis and streptococcus mutans use this property to attach to the surface of the teeth. And if the glycocalyx is loosely associated with the cell and does not exclude any particle, it is called slime layer. Our last topic is plasmid. Plasmid is extra chromosomal, double stranded, circular DNA molecule capable of replicating independently. There are two types of plasmid, transmissible and non-transmissible. The transmissible are very few copies and large molecular weight which transmit from one bacteria to another during conjugation. The non-transmissible are smaller in molecular weight and large number of copies per cell. Okay, now for the function of plasmid. First of all, the plasmid carries the gene for antibiotic resistance which is mediated by the variety of enzymes. Then it carries the genes for exotoxins like enterotoxin of E. coli, exfoliative toxin of Staphylococcus aureus and tetanus toxin of Clostridium tetani. Then it carries the gene for pili or fimbri that mediates adherence of bacteria with epithelial cells. Then it carries the gene for resistance to heavy metals like mercury, silver which are present in various types of antiseptics. Lastly, they carry the genes for resistance to UV light which is mediated by the DNA repairing enzymes. And lastly, plasmid contains some gene for enzyme or proteins called bacteriocin. It can kill another bacteria. Example is colicin by E. coli and pyosin by pseudomonas. So thank you all. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe and give a big thumbs up if you like the video.